Last time I showed you the sled I made that does minor cuts in a different way as well as a box joint jig that's built into the fence. But what if you already have a cross cut sled that does everything you need and don't feel like an entire sled build is worth making just to do box joins? Instead of all the trouble of making a sled, we're going to make a jig you can either add to a miter gauge or to a pre-existing sled. And we're going to make it simple with a table saw and a drill and is $20 or less. Oh, and on top of all that, why not some free step-by-step -step instructions with the material list and sizes? We're going to do all that today as I show you a simple box joint jig that doesn't discriminate in making box joint sizes that you, yes you, can make very easily. Because this follows so closely to my plans that I made, I'm going to explain everything in detail as we go along. If you plan on making this jig so that it fits on your sled, you'll need to first measure your sled and cut a 2x6 to length. Then you'll need to set your table saw blade so that it, it is exactly an inch from the top of the arch. Next we'll set the width of the blade and the fence at 2.5 inches. We're going to start our dado by running our 2x6 through. Then we'll move the fence in by about a blade's width and make another pass. We'll continue this process until we've cut out a one inch wide groove. Don't be afraid to measure often as you'll want to make sure you don't go over that inch. Next we'll make our first cut by attaching it to our sled using clamps on either side. Before we go any further, let me quickly show you how to attach this to a miter gauge if you're planning on bypassing the sled altogether. First off, you'll want to line up your board so that your left edge is about 13 inches from the center of the blade. I used a sharpie marker to color the tips of my bolt before pressing it in and marking my board. Once it's done, you can see the outline of the bolt. If not, you might have to do it a few times. Use a brad point bit the size of your bolt and mark where just the point protrudes using tape on the drill bit as a depth gauge. Drill down to the tape and flip the board over. To finish it off, use a forcible bit the size of your bolt head. Insert bolts, add washers, and use a wing nut or I use a thumb screw. All done. Now we'll need to cut a one inch section off of a one by four about 20 inches long in all. The one inch piece will fit snugly in the dado we just cut. Mark a line right across the edge. Now we'll draw a couple diagonals and make an X. We'll clamp the board down and use a drill and a 3 8 inch Forzner bit. Watch the edge of the Forzner bit to make sure you're cutting straight down. Now we'll cut off this one at the table saw. I'm only showing two of these here, but you'll need to make three in all. We'll run a 3 8 inch rod through the center of all three of them to make sure they're lined up properly. Okay, we're gonna make what I call a pin. It's simply a resting arm that we'll butt our wood up against as we crank and move the wood we're cutting. The pin will easily be made by duplicating the stop block process from before. But this time we'll use a half inch Forzner bit when we go to drill. Again checking to make sure that the Forzner bit is square with the board. You can see that this brad T-nut fits loose inside. Next we'll add another inch to the end of the board so that the pin is about two inches long and we'll cut it off of the table saw. While we'll want the other pieces snug, we definitely don't want the pin snug. I used a little sandpaper to remove enough that it moves smoothly in the track. We'll add tape under the pin and under both stop blocks to make sure they're even in the track. We'll thread the threaded rod through the first stop block, the brad T-nut, and pin, and then the second stop block. With nature's magic glue, we'll epoxy the T-nut to the pin and allow it to semi-cure. To make sure that we get the stop blocks in the right direction, we'll put arrows on both and remove the assembly as well as the tape in the track. We'll position the second stop block so it's a little to the right of the cut we made, and the stop block on the end so that it's a nut length away from the edge. We'll add a washer, a nut, and make sure that the threaded rod juts out about a half inch. On the opposite side, we'll add a washer and a nut and make sure that both sides are snug against the opposing stop blocks. 
Use a marker to get a good idea where the nuts are on the thread and we'll remove the mechanism again Roll back the nuts and add some epoxy. Rolling the nuts back to the mark line we made. When the assembly has semi-cured, we'll put it back in the channel, adding glue to the blocks. Now we'll add a crank, which is nothing more than a two inch piece of the one by four we cut earlier. We'll measure in on both sides about a half inch. One mark will get a quarter inch hole drilled out while the other will get a half inch hole from a Forstner bit. We'll add a prong T-nut by tapping it in and drilling out the divots with an eighth inch drill bit. We'll cut the crank off. Mix some epoxy and add it to the three inch bolt end, tapping it in place. With the T-net, we'll glue it in just enough so that it lays flat to the board before allowing it to semi-cure. After about 30 minutes or so, we'll add a few washes to the end where the threaded rod is jutting out and the crank. We'll stand the jig on its side and drop epoxy into the T-net hole this time allowing the entire thing to fully cure. You should have enough left over from the one inch one by four we cut earlier to cut off a one inch block. Find the center and drill a quarter inch hole through the end. Jam a couple quarter inch nuts on the end and you're set. Making box joints now is as easy as butter and toast. You'll line your first board up to the pin. The tooth of your blade should be on the inside of your board. You'll make your first cut, and since I'm making the joints an eighth inch apart or so, I'll make a second cut and stop. I'll line up my second board next to the last cut. Then I'll add my clamps. Now I'll crank four times without cutting. I'll cut two more times, and rotate four times without cutting. And from here, it really is a numbers game. For every group of cuts you make, you'll add your cutting rotations with two. Since I'm rotating twice, I'll make two cuts and then add four non-cut rotations. Two cuts, four non-cut rotations. In my next example, I'm rotating the crank 10 times. This means I'll make 10 cuts, rotate 12 times without cutting, 10 cuts, rotate 12 times without cutting, etc. until it's finished. We here at the Make Things Compound are rarely ever satisfied after finishing a project. It's not until a project's finished that different ideas spark at the campfire. There is one little addition that could be made that I think makes us an even better jig. We'll use a piece of plywood that's an inch or so larger than the fence of our jig. I traced out the pin and left a couple inches of blank space below with a shoe that will drag across the base. Now we are using a bandsaw which doesn't fit the guidelines set at the beginning, but this is the advanced version, so I think we're okay. Now we'll glue this added piece onto the pin and it's done. This will make our moving operation from stock to pin lineup hands-free, which could cause errors if you don't line up your wood properly to the pin. 
Remember, there is an Instructable with much more information in the description and the pinned comment below. I'll update those instructions and possibly add more videos to it in the future, so be sure to check it out. If you like this video, you'll probably like the advanced sled video I made, which will also be in the description and at the end of this video. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below, come find me on Instagram at MakeThingsWithRob, and remember to keep making things.